show. Here it is, guys. This has probably been the most requested game to feature on my channel. My name is Jiggy Lookback, and I just played Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts for the first time. Okay, let's get this out of the way. As a huge Banjo fan, I'm immediately turned off by Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. After years of waiting for Banjo 3E, just knowing this was made in its stead and it's a vehicle builder action game makes me have a bad taste in my mouth. This is even further pushed by the game making a pretty drastic departure with the style of graphics. I mean, everything is square when it used to be spherical. Spherical! I think what made this worse is we got a tech demo for Rare's next Banjo game at Space World and some dope Banjo X stuff. To be fair, even the first teaser for Nuts and Bolts would get me excited, only for it to come out and be what it is today. But I'm pushing it all aside because I never gave this game a fair shake. I never took the time to play through and have a genuine experience with it. I'd only played it very briefly and thought it was kind of boring, which I'm sure a lot of others, especially Banjo super fans, probably did too. So this is me giving it the old college try. Oh boy. Into the game we go! So immediately we're hit with an intro recalling the events of Banjo, Kazooie, and Tui. Banjo's eating pizza while Kazooie is playing video games. Grunty's head shows up out of a bunch of rubble and they seem like they're about to fight when everything freezes and Log appears basically pitting Grunty against us for the claim on Spiral Mountain. He basically restores us to normal minus all our moveset from Kazooie and Tui, and Grunty gets a body that seems organic? It's kind of bizarre actually. I'm gonna pause myself right there. We're gonna look at these game's models and characters. Essentially, we have the main cast of Banjo-Kazooie and a few stragglers from Tui. This new graphical style, like I said earlier, sees a more boxy look. And to be honest, it's a mixed bag. Some characters I feel translated very well, and others unfortunately just did not. I'm gonna show characters we're familiar with, and then we're gonna blast them good or bad. We'll go a little in-depth with the main cast, and then quick succession the more minor characters. Starting with the bear and bird themselves, Banjo and Kazooie. Banjo, although blocky, I think was translated fairly well. There are just two big gripes I have against him. One, I really dislike the excessive stitching on his shorts and backpack. Even if it makes sense them being used and abused for years, I just feel the stitching I see a lot in this game, and it feels like they had a lot more detail they could add with these higher quality models, so they just kept trying to add things even if it's not necessary. I'm not saying that's the case, but kind of how it seems. Less is more, in my opinion. The second gripe is his eyes. This, in my mind, is what makes his model not as appealing. Rare is known for putting eyes on anything and calling it a character. They went for a more realistic eye approach, but it just doesn't work at all. It's not terrible, but it's not great. Look how great he would look with round eyes. All in all, I give Banjo a pass. Kazooie, however, I hate her look in this. In the teaser, you see a slightly less altered Kazooie model, and I think that was a great happy medium. In Nuts and Bolts, the feathers look kinda ugly, and her face is just too off. It may look more bird-like, but it just doesn't look anything like Kazooie. Kazooie fails. Grunty, our big bad. She translated really nicely, and I actually like how her head is floating in a tank on a new body. Is the body organic? It looks green like a zombie body. I think this look really works with her, so she gets a pass. Mumbo? I think Mumbo himself looks fine. It was always weird how every game since Kazooie he's gotten skinnier and skinnier, but it's not super dramatic from Tui to Nuts and Bolts. As a side character, him and a handful of others get costume changes throughout the game, but his main outfit is in Showdown Town and he has denim overalls. It works fine. Mumbo gets a pass. Bottles. Not too much to say about him. His glasses are a little strangely edged, but other than that, I think he translated fairly well too. He also gets a pass. Humba, definitely my least favorite redesign aside from Kazooie. If you had this pulled up without playing Nuts and Bolts, I wouldn't know who this is. At least the other characters give some semblance of a similarity to themselves in other games. Humba had so much style and they just took it all away and made her look generic. I don't even want to look at her. Humba fails. The Lord of the Games, aka Log. What I like, he has little mice zooming around him and they have USB tails. Other than that, pretty generic. I can't say I dislike him, but I don't like him either. He's bland, what can I say? When you have characters like Banjo, Grunty, Mumbo, their charm outshines him. He looks more like something in the background than an actual character. I'll give him a pass though, because he serves his purpose, he just doesn't have an iconic design. But he's not terrible. Klungo is back. He's another model I'm also not a fan of. He was one of my favorite characters from Kazooie and Tui, and he still has charm becoming a game dev like he said he was going to in Tui. That continuation is hilarious. His game, hilarious. They just unfortunately made my boys so freaking ugly and again, unnecessary stitches. They gotta stop with that. Klungo fails. Now for a slew of more minor characters. Trophy Thomas, pretty generic. 
couldn't remember his name every time I saw him. I'd be like, oh, that trophy guy. Like Log, I also find him bland. Though, even more so. I don't think there's much to like going on here, even his personality. I'm gonna fail him. Jinjos, I hate how their noses are stretched. They look weird, but King Jingling looks good still. So Jinjos fail, but Jingling passes. Jolly Dodger, our old pal from the saloon in Tui who changed his name. He used to dress in pirate attire, now he's your friendly neighborhood watch seller. I don't know why they changed him, but I don't mind it. Pass. Boggy, way too square. Dislike it, fail. Captain Blubber, somewhat faithful to the original design. I'll give him a pass. Mr. Fit, pretty faithful as well. Also pass. Piglet, an officer pig, not super memorable, fail. I'm sure there are more, but I'm over it. Basically, any radical redesign is not very good, and new characters don't have charm like the old ones, but some old ones translated pretty well. Let's talk about those levels. Essentially, you have a few worlds. Each world has several acts that you can unlock as you collect jiggies, which, by the way, get dispensed into a big gumball-looking machine, and you have to carry the giant jiggies to the center of town. It's a bit tedious, but I dig it, especially that they're giant. Showdown Town is your main hub area where you dispense the jiggies. It's one large area you traverse to find doorway portals leading to the other worlds. It's filled with citizens ranging from rhinos to penguins. It even has police that'll chase you for jiggy smuggling, which is hilarious. I actually love a lot about this town and exploring, plus you can bump into the whole cast at points around it. At first you'll be limited to where you go, but eventually you'll unlock upgrades to your trolley, which is the only vehicle you can use here to traverse to different areas. Or you can do this glitch by standing on something you place in your cart and pick up your cart. See, they can still fly. Thank you, internet, for that one. Seems like something that should have been patched. Aside from Showdown Town, you have Nutty Acres, which is a large island where Mumble harvests coconuts. I'm sure those are to supply all the coconut guns in the world. The aesthetic here is a large grassy island with hills and a giant volcano surrounded by water and giant gears. When you fly to the top, you see the clouds are fake and mechanical, which is kind of funny. All in all, it's okay. It's not my favorite world, but not my least favorite world by any means. Logbox 720. This is an inside look inside an Xbox 360. It's got a cool vibe with the computer bugs and chips everywhere. The discs spinning are really cool of different rare titles from the Xbox era. I will say though, it gets old traversing this one as it's a lot of pass and flying on them is a nightmare unless you have precise copter and control. Some of the missions are cool with the bits affecting and glitching out the music in the world. All in all though, it's one of my least favorites. Banjo Land, a fitting and loving tribute to Banjo Kazooie and Tui. You'll see elements from previous games levels and characters. It really fills your heart with joy and it's a lot of fun to explore. Zijigosium. It's a giant coliseum. I personally really like this level and it being open and having a proper track. Plus you can traverse above on treacherous platforms. I just really dig the vibe. Then there's the terrarium of terror. Giant plants are everywhere and you'll find yourself smashing through glass walls and navigating up large mushrooms. This one is also really cool and makes you think outside the box with vehicles. All in all, I think these levels are actually pretty good and look good too. I will say excessive stitching is a thing. But with the worlds, it makes sense as Log is rushing to put them together. You also have Mumble's Garage where you can go to a test track where you can play Log's Lost Challenge, a DLC for the game. It's just kind of small but fun sandbox to test vehicles. Each doorway you unlock is a new chapter for the worlds and introduces new challenges for you to complete, so there can be quite a few. The actual structure of this though is a bit frustrating. I would love to go through and beat each world in order, but the game is designed to unlock random doorways, so it's more like you play one or two parts of Nutty Acres and unlock a logbox level, then play that, get a Banjo Land level, and then go back to Nutty Acres. It's a bit frustrating, but if you play them as you unlock them, I think it's the best way to do it. Which leads me to the next topic, gameplay. The entire premise is when Log reverts Banjo and Kazooie to being back in shape, they lose most of their previous abilities. You won't be rolling or beak busting anything, instead you'll have a magic wrench that can pick up and hold objects in the air. You'll use that to pick up items and fix parts in your vehicle creations. While you do have some basic platforming as Banjo and some basic attacks with the wrench, the game emphasizes creating vehicles in Mumbo's garage for any and every situation. It does cause you to be creative. This gameplay and creative system really reminds me of Legos. Now you probably heard that before, but it really, really reminds me of how I played with Legos. Growing up, I would occasionally get Lego kits to make cool stuff. I'd start it and then stop, and basically they'd all end up in this giant space jam tin at my grandma's. Then I'd pick up these partly built ships and stuff and add on to them, which is exactly how I played nuts and bolts. I'd find myself grabbing Humba's blueprints and then adding engines, wings, and other parts as necessary to beat the task. For the most part, I found myself adding more power <laughs> and generally could accomplish most tasks. I can see how you get really in depth and spend hours upon hours building exactly what you need. 
but not me. The comparisons to Tears of the Kingdom are real here though, let's be honest. But that game does it way better, and it's a lot easier. I found picking up specific objects with the wand can sometimes be frustrating, and trying to get them to set down on a specific spot even worse. It's functional, but it definitely doesn't feel precise and created moments of frustration for me. But generally, I'd say the combination of building, minor platforming, battling, and exploring created a lot of fun challenges with a wide array of solutions to beat, which I'm all for. Being creative and finding your own way of beating things is a big draw in this, and you can do just that for most of it, minus the log choice challenges, but even those can be balanced in fun experiences. Now let's talk about that music. Oh, that sweet, sweet music. Grant Kirkup joined forces with other game composer veterans Robin Beanland and Dave Kleinick. This music slaps. It wonderfully adds its own tracks as well as creating vibrant remixes of previous banjo games. It definitely feels like banjo. I'm convinced Grant Kirkup just can't do wrong with his gaming soundtracks. It also has a lot of beautiful orchestration that makes things feel more modern than the previous 64 sound font, though I do still love that old sound. Every world and every bit of the sound design is great, although I will say Banjo and Kazooie's noises feel straight up ripped from Tui. They may have very well been and just reworked a tad. I'm not mad about it, I just noticed it. I never felt even for a second with the sound design that anything was an issue though. Somehow this game gives us the most annoying persistent enemies in the world, and they don't annoy me. Well done. That's all I can say. It's well done. So as you can see, Nuts and Bolts, although a little controversial with its looks, isn't so bad after all, but I do have a few more gripes and praises for it. I really, really dislike how every single freaking thing is an obstacle I need to overcome. Sometimes when doing races, if I smacked into another racer, I go flying and spinning completely out of control, causing me to restart over and over until I didn't. Not to mention you can hit stuff and come to a full stop regardless of what it is. Oh, and it's especially bad in Showdown Town where the characters are so dense Sometimes it even feels like they're jumping in front of you and trying to avoid you. It's just awful. It's like, smack, oh, smack, oof, ah, oof, uh, hey, hey, I'm driving you. I also found the repair on the fly mechanic to suck, which basically when you lose parts of your vehicles, you can press the right bumper and summon them back. When it worked, it was awesome, but I had lots of moments where the part just couldn't catch up to me, or sometimes it just blatantly didn't want to reattach, and it would just sit there. It was even worse when it was Banjo's seat. I also found Grunty's battles to be way too easy, not a single one of them was hard. But I guess that's not too big of a deal. Even in the end here, <laughs> Grunty's broom gets caught and I just cheesed this last boss fight. It was pretty funny though. A lot of challenges in this game are actually really repetitive as well. Like a lot of pick up and drop this off over here or race here. There's some variety and can be fun, but a lot of them can get tedious. I can't help but feel it's about a 60% good missions to 40% bad ratio. That's a statistic I'm pulling out of my butt, however I think it's probably fairly accurate to my experience. Also this game has way too much dialogue. One of the things I found re-experiencing Tui recently was there was a ton of dialogue but it was all witty and funny. Now the witty and funny is only every once in a while, and you get loads of bloated dialogue explaining what's happening. I found myself skipping it, where in other games I always try to read it. I'm glad they gave a summary to your mission as you select a vehicle. I also dislike how the game seems to acknowledge it knew what people would hate about it, and kind of slaps you in your face. It just doesn't rub you the right way. But I do love the creativity and continuation of the story directly following upon the references from previous games and even acknowledging other games in the Rare Universe, which I totally have a video on and you should go watch if you haven't. The best part is it even teases a couple like Viva Pinata Kart and Grab by the Ghoulies 2. Also this game has a decent buffer for collectibles needing 81 jiggies by the end of the game, but the game is 131 and there are so many ways to acquire them. This game may be rough around the edges and everyone and their mother says that it would have been received better as a spin-off with another character. And I actually agree with that sentiment, so I'll echo it with my comment. Nuts and Bolts is a fine game, it just wasn't what people wanted with a banjo game. I personally think they should have made this a mumble focus game. Since you know, he already has a wand and focuses on transforming things and stuff, but oh well. We got what we got and in my mind any banjo content is good banjo content. I will say this game doesn't deserve all the crap it gets from folks. I found myself having a genuinely good time building and playing, but I do in my heart wish we got a true Banjo 3E building off of 2E. Also look how good Banjo and Kazooie looked in Smash Bros, this looks so much better. All in all, you defeat Grunty, reclaim Spiral Mountain, and appease the Lord of Games. In my legendary scale of Pop-Tarts, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts gets 7 Pop-Tarts out of 10, and they're unfrosted brown sugar cinnamon because there's something sweet under there, but you think it's going to be not as good from the outside. On my Discord, I asked people to submit Banjo-Kazooie related art, so here are some of the folks who submitted. 
Thanks for doing it, and I'm happy to have you a part of my community. Well, that's all I have for you. If you're a fan of Rare Nintendo stuff, you may want to check out some of these other videos I have. Please be sure to drop a like to help spread my content around, and subscribe if you feel like it. Until next time, have a good one. Jiggy, look back!